What's going on YouTube family, it's your man Pristine, back with another video. Welcome to the full Pristine review for the Samsung Galaxy A52. Now, the Samsung Galaxy A line is really, really making a lot of noise. And I feel like the A line was a very important play for Samsung, given the fact that we're seeing so many budget and mid-range devices that are getting much, much better that a lot of people are going with over flagship devices. And a lot that has to do with that is cost. But we're no longer living in those days where, you know, you, you know the saying, you get what you pay for, you know. And it's like if you wanted something that had like more of a top of the line premium type of feel, then you had to spend premium money. Right. Well, as time has gone on over the years and budget and mid range devices have gotten better and better and better we're actually starting to see a lot of these mid-range devices, which the A52 is, they're, you know, there's certain things that are taken away from them that kind of make them not necessarily on flagship level. But as far as them being on par with the wants and the needs of the average consumer, oh man, this is, this is golden. And what I always try to encourage people to do is don't overspend if you don't have to. Research devices, find out what your wants and needs are, and find devices that are offering those things. Do your price checks to see where you're going to get the best value, and then go ahead and make your decision. But see, a lot of people, a lot of people aren't really concerned about internal specs. Now, me, you know, us tech reviewers, you know, we're big on this type of stuff because, you know, we 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 get these devices and we're reviewing them for you to help you all make informed decisions. So we have to know, you know, what these devices are working with. But the average consumer, that's not always the case. They just want a solid camera system, a beautiful display to watch all their content, social media, or just whatever they're doing. They want to be able to game. They want a phone that's going to be reliable and have reliable battery life. That's going to give them that staying power and that additional juice that they feel they're going to need to get them through their day. A lot of people ain't like, what's the processor like? What's the RAM? How much storage does it have? Is the storage expandable? Like, you know, uh, you know, and, you know, different people use their devices differently. I mean, so, you know, the, the storage expansion, you know, yes, I can see people griping over stuff like that. That's important to people. But a lot of times, like this, the processor and all that type of thing, man, you'll be amazed at how many people they just ain't really up on that type of stuff. But with that said, the good thing is you don't necessarily have to be up on those types of things in 2021 because you can get some really, really, really good devices at affordable prices that are going to give you all the performance that you need and some. And the Galaxy A52 is one of those devices. Now, let's jump into this thing. So real quick, price and specs. Now, this phone, this is the T-Mobile variant. This is the A52 5G. There's an A52 and an A52 5G. They're not to be confused. These are different devices, okay? So if you're looking to get the A52 5G, but you go to Amazon and you find that A52 and it's only like 350 bucks, it's 349.99, and you just like, ooh, you know what I'm saying? Deals, deals, you know what I'm saying? I got that A52 5G for the 350. If it don't say 5G on the end, then it's not the 5G variant, okay? They're two totally different devices. Okay, you got the Samsung Galaxy A52 and you got the A52 5G. And from what I understand, the A52 5G is offering just a little bit more. Just a little bit. Just a little smidgen. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All right, but for the 5G here, we got a 6.5 inch Super AMOLED 120 hertz display. Uh, uh, uh. On a device that costs four ninety nine ninety nine. Now this is a 1080p display. It's not a quad HD display. It's not a 4K display. It's a 1080p by 2400 pixel display 
We've got a 20 by 9 aspect ratio. We've got a 407 PPI pixel density. We've got an 84.1 screen to body ratio. We've got a maximum screen brightness of 800 nits. We've got Corning Gorilla Glass 5 on the front, and we've got a plastic back. So, yes, this is a glastic device. I don't give a damn if they ain't got glass on the back. You know, people be making a big deal about, oh, it ain't premium. It ain't premium. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Internal specifications, the guts. We've got a Snapdragon 750G, which is a new mid-range 5G processor. Okay. We've got an 8 nanometer chips. Uh, yeah, this is a, I'm sorry. The 750G 5G 8 nanometer chipset. We've got an octa-core CPU, Adreno 619 GPU. We're running Android 11 with One UI 3.1 over Android 11. 8 gigabytes of RAM. Okay, and that's one of the differences that the A52 has six gigabytes of RAM. The A52 5G has eight gigabytes of RAM. So we got eight gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of storage. Storage is expandable. And we do have an SD card slot for memory expansion. Now, for the cameras, we've got a quad camera situation all right and i'll get into that here in a second now let's get into that build quality because like i said i mean this phone it's gorilla glass 5 on the front and it's plastic on the back and i like it's just kind of got like that matte feel it's very hard to smudge up with fingerprints and I noticed that the A52 is going to give you different color variations. The A52 5G, from what I've seen, you can only get in this black color, which Samsung is calling awesome black. That's what it is. So for the 5G, you can get awesome black, but the other color, uh, the other carrier, uh, color variations, you've got awesome white, awesome violet, and awesome blue. And I believe you can get those other colors for the A52, not the A52 5G. If I'm wrong, somebody correct me down in the comments. I've only seen the 5G in awesome black. All right. It would have been sweet to be able to have gotten this in white or something like that because I've got my S21 here in that. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> not to steal your thunder, A52, but look at that. Look at that. This is the S21 Tony Montana edition, man. This is the Tony Montana edition. You know what I'm saying? That's that Galaxy A52 to cocaine edition. You know what I'm saying? That's that cocaina edition. You know what I'm saying? That cocaina. You know what I'm saying? Samsung, man. What y'all know about that cocaina? You know what I'm saying? Man. Man. That, whew. That's that Tony Montana. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. You know what I'm saying? Enough about the S21 right there, man. Back, back, <laughs> back to the A52, man. Back to the A52. All right. Woo. Oh, so pretty. So pretty. Matte feel. I mean, this feels premium to me. Like, I, I have not a problem at all whatsoever with the way that this phone feels. Again, 6.5 inches. It's easy to wield in one hand. As you can see, I'm able to do with absolutely no problems whatsoever. I do have really small hands and you can see, I mean, the device, it's, you know, the build quality, it's, it, it feels durable. It feels premium. It's nice and thin. You can see it's curved around the edges. You know what I mean? To give you some grip ability. It's not like, it's not like you've got sharp corners digging in your palm while you're trying to hold the device. And so if you're rocking this phone, booty bucking naked, baby, you know what I'm saying? You ain't going to have to worry about it like jabbing you in the palm of your hand, leaving prints and stuff or becoming uncomfortable or anything like that. It feels really good in the hand. Um, and, you know, I'm a fan of you know the plastic back it's the same thing with the s21 right you know it, it's glass on the front i think you know this is corning gorilla glass victus you know but then we've got you know the uh the plastic back and again it just kind of has like that same feel you know it's not a fingerprint magnet at all whatsoever. You do still have wireless charging, you know, so for, the, for those of you that were just like, oh, well, you can't wirelessly charge a device with a plastic back. How come you can't? You know, the S21, you can do that. 
You know what I'm saying? Now, because of the fact that the A52 here is not the flagship, you do not have wireless charging capabilities. But is that a problem? No, because you've got a super fast wireless charger. Ooh, and I almost had a drop test for you. <laughs> that was a good catch. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, it charges up super fast. I mean, so, you know, you don't necessarily, you know, I, I don't really miss the fact that I don't, I'm not able to wirelessly charge on this device because, you know, the wireless charger is not going to charge as fast as the wall adapter is going to charge this phone. So that to me is not really, really a big deal. All right. So the build quality, I got to say is solid. Again, you know, some people may, you know, it's 6.5 inches, you know, some people may have an issue, you know, with the size and you can see, you know, the difference, um, let me see the S21, I believe the S21 is 6.1 inches and you can see the S21 side by side. Let's see. And you can see that it is smaller. Okay. I think the S21 is like 6.1 or 6.2. So the A52 5G is 6.5, all right? And that's the regular A, uh, A, uh, S21, I'm sorry. It's not the S21 Plus or the Ultra. Obviously, the Ultra is going to be, you know, or even the S21 Plus is going to be either the same size as the 6.5 inches here. Well, I know the Ultra is like 6.8 inches or something like that. But uh, I think this is going to be right on par with the S21 Plus, okay? Um, so, you know, in my mind, build quality is solid. It's not an issue at all whatsoever. You know, um, now performance, again, 120 hertz refresh rate. You can see just scrolling apps is super quick and super smooth. It's not choppy. We've got the Google Now feed, which is golden in my personal opinion, because I do, I get so much news and information about different things with the Google feed. And so this used to be Bixby, but I like the fact that Samsung removed that and, you know, they give you the Google now feed. You know what I mean? I'm a huge fan of that. Now I'm not sure if you can put Bixby there if you want it there. Um, because I haven't tried because <laughs> once I saw the Google feed, I'm just like, yo, I, you know, that's, that's all I need. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a huge, huge fan of that. Okay, scrolling up to the app drawer, you can see we also have that 120 hertz refresh rate during the app drawer. You can see just scrolling is just super, super smooth. Now, you know, data speeds are going to differ. I am connected to my Wi-Fi right now. I currently don't have my main SIM card in here, but again, this phone is 5G. It does pick up on T-Mobile's 5G signals very well. Um, and I understand that uh, the whole point of 5G is to give us, you know, faster, pretty much everything. You know, the goal is to be able to, you know, reach, you know, some of your strongest, you know, uh, 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 Wi-Fi connection speeds over a mobile network and just give you the ability to download games, movies, music, you know, photos, whatever, in just these lightning fast speeds. Now. I can't say that that's been the situation here in Seattle, Washington. I know that 5G is becoming more and more of a thing and the 5G towers are being put up all over the place. And even though a lot of these companies like T-Mobile, AT&T, Verizon are touting, oh, you know, we got the fastest 5G speeds. A lot of that is going to depend on where you live. But where I live in Seattle, Washington, I'll say maybe my speeds are just a tad bit faster than actual 4G. You know what I mean? So I figure in my area, I don't necessarily need 5G right now, but it's good to have 5G because when it becomes more of a thing and your phones are really able to take advantage of those speeds, then you want a phone that's going to be future proof to be able to give you that option. You don't want to just have a 4G LTE device and then boom, you're able to pick up on 5G fully. It's like fully out there and then you're going to have to upgrade your, your phone just to be able to, you know, tap into, you know what I'm saying, these higher speeds, you know. Uh, but, you know, again, 4G LTE is still super solid. I mean, you know, my Surface Duo is not a 5G device. It runs off of 4G LTE and that is lightning quick. I mean, so, you know, it just depends on, you know, whether or not 5G is something that you want right now, ladies and gentlemen. That's really what it boils down to. All right. But you can see, 
getting into some of the most graph uh, well, graphically intense games some of the most content heavy applications like my music files this is uh uh uh, uh youtube music spotify you know i'm gonna go to amazon you know do a little shopping you know all right took a second there to just load things up there buttery smooth experience uh let's go to best buy real quick you know load that up and again you know your speeds are going to differ this is just all coming off of my wi-fi connection you know speeds could be faster or slower you know with your sim card in it okay so just wanted to give you guys a heads up of that you get the point swipe up from the left there okay that's going to take me to my recents everything that i got popped open boom if I want to go back to Best Buy, boom, it's right there for me. If I want to go back to Amazon, boom, it's right there for me. All right. If I want to go back to Spotify, oh, well, that was Spotify, YouTube. You get the point. You get the point. Okay. RAM management is solid on this device. You know, everything that I've attempted to throw at this device, it was able to handle it with no problems at all whatsoever. All right. Whatsoever. No problems. Okay. So that's your performance. Now, cameras on the front of this bad boy, boom. We got the selfie camera right there, smack in the middle of the device at the top. We've got a 32 megapixel F2.2, 26 millimeter wide lens with uh, in 0.8 micron pixel featuring HDR 4K recording at 30 FPS, 1080p recording also at 30 FPS. Now on the rear, we have a quad camera system, okay? And we've got a 64 megapixel sensor, f1.8 aperture with a 26 millimeter wide lens. Also featuring a, well, this is a 0 0.8. Oh yeah, also a 0 0.8 micron pixel featuring PDAF and optical image stabilization. We've got a 12 megapixel f2.2 aperture, 123 field, uh, degree, 123 degree field of view wide, ultra wide lens with the micron pixels of 1.12. We've got a five megapixel F 2.4 aperture macro lens. We also have a five megapixel F 2 point aperture depth sensor. We do have gyro electronic image stabilization, LED flash, panorama, HDR, 4K recording at 30 frames per second. And we've got 1080p recording on the rear cameras at 30 or 60 FPS. All right, now, these cameras are super solid. They're going to be more than enough for the average consumer. And, you know, for a mid-range device, not to say that, you know, um, because of the fact that mid-range devices have gotten so much better over time, I was actually not surprised by the output of both the selfie camera and the primary camera. Okay, so if you want to scroll to the end of the video, you know, there's timestamps to just go straight to the dedicated camera review. And, you know, go ahead and check out that content, ladies and gentlemen. You're in for a real treat because this camera is super solid on this device. And so it's good to see that even though this device isn't quite the flagship variation, it's not the S21 lineup, you know, it's the A lineup. And it's good to see that even with the A lineup, you know, the mid-range and budgets, because, you know, the A starts off at budget and then it gets all the way up to, you know, uh, the mid-range. You know, you've got the A52 and the A72. And to me, there just really wasn't too many differences between the 52 and the 72. And so I was just like, I'm not even stressing the 72. You know what I'm saying? And the 72 is harder to get. You know, the 52, it's available. I go cop that right now. And so, boom, I went and copped the 52 because I knew that I wanted to bring it into the laboratory and review it for you guys. All right. So uh, that's the camera situation right there. Um, now, let's move on to battery life battery life uh had to sing it to you baby yeah we got a 4500 milliamp hour battery baby 45 yeah long lasting battery ladies and gentlemen you know go 4500 milliamps non removable we've got fast charging 25 watts um samsung is touting that you can get 50% in 30 minutes and that is absolutely true that is absolutely true. We got super fast wireless charging. You know, again, it's not, you know, the big 65 watt charger, you know, that we see with OnePlus and, and Xiaomi. 
But I mean, again, if your if your phone is topped at, tapped out at zero, you you really are going to get a half hour in about thirty minutes. You know what I mean? Um, so you know you got pretty pretty quick, you know, charging speeds on this device. Again, there's no wireless charging, no wireless power share. We do have a USB Type C 2.0 and a USB on the go. All right. Um, so uh, you know, again, I'm able to easily get through a full day easily with this device okay you know i put this devices through some heavy paces to try to kill the battery off and the battery just would not die it's got that berry white you know i got uh stay in power rest in peace berry you know what i'm saying i'm you know my voice is a little high pitch right now i couldn't get that real deep deep you know what i'm saying yeah, a little berry white yeah you yeah if you know who berry white is you young bucks man google berry white you know what I'm saying? If you don't know who Barry White is, you know what I'm saying? Um, but uh, yeah, so, you know, battery life is super solid. Very easily is going to get you into another day or, or uh, get you through a full day and possibly even into the next day, depending on how you use your device. And I always tell people, you know, your battery life is going to be determined with how you use your phone. If you're heavy, a heavy user, gaming, downloading, movie watching, you might want to keep the charger with you. Okay, I'm a light to moderate to user, and so for the way that I use my device, I can pull down two days on a single charge on this phone very easily. Very easily. Okay, so it all depends on how you use your device. Okay, um, additional features well, One UI is my absolute favorite user interface because it is packed full of features oxygen os used to be my favorite uh user interface but now that has been overtaken and uh, one ui has claimed the top spot in uh as far as uh the user interfaces that i like um there are so many different things but i'm just going to name off some of the basic things and these are all things that you that you're going to find on the flagship lineup with the s with the s series things like double tap to sleep double tap to wake um the fingerprint sensor has been greatly improved um but you know what it's not like the su it's not super fast like it is on the s21 so it feels like the s21 boom you just tap it and you just get in there it feels like the a series has the under display uh, fingerprint sensor of last year if that makes sense it seems like it has the s20s under the display fingerprint sensor which it needed improvement, but it still worked. But you can see on the S21 lineup, that fingerprint sensor has been majorly improved. So it's like, you know, you really got to, you know, lay your thumb on it, press it, and then it gets into it. But again, I mean, it works. But it's just not as snappy as it is on the S series. Okay. So just the security features. Now, the, the, fin the, 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 um, the facial recognition, I'm gonna demonstrate this for you guys real quick. Oh, oh, I didn't mean to hit the score. Okay, let's see. Okay, it just pops right into the phone, just like that. Okay. Double tap to wake it. Boom, and it just goes right into it as soon as it recognizes my face. I like that because sometimes my hands may be tied up and you know, and I, you know, I don't know too, people, some people have made a big deal about the placement of the fingerprint, um, how it's like super low. Like to me, that's not a problem. That's not a problem. It was the same thing on the OnePlus 9 Pro, you know what I mean? Where the fingerprint sensor was like down, like around the same area where it is on the Samsung. That's not a problem. I mean, just adjusting your thumb, ooh, big deal. You know what I mean? Some people just make, they, they make big deals of foolishness. You know, the fingerprint placement is solid. It works. It's reliable. It's not a problem. Now, I also like the fact that, too, the quick toggles, we've got Dolby Atmos. If you're a music file, you're going to love Dolby Atmos because it's going to give you the ability to really customize your sound. you got some presets here, auto, movie, music, and voice. Um, and so, you know, you can kind of choose a sound that best fits you. 
And I also like to, just to expand upon that, if we go to sound and vibration, go to system sound and vibration control. Uh, what am I looking for? Wait, one second. Okay, pardon me, I went into the wrong section. But if you go into, let's see, let me zoom in just a tad so you guys can see that. Okay, if you go into sound quality and effects, and I think I've showed this on other Samsung devices, this gives you the ability to really, really get in depth with customizing your sound, okay? So obviously, we've got Dolby Atmos, which if you click on that, that's gonna take you to that screen that I just showed you, okay? You got Dolby Atmos for gaming. I don't game on my phone, so I have that turned off, but it's good to know that you can optimize the sound for gaming if that's what you wanna do. We've got an equalizer here, which is gonna give you some presets, normal pop, classic, jazz, rock, custom, and then you've got the equalizer down there. You can utilize your fingers to adjust the sound how you want it, but then you got adapt sound. And this is dope because what it does is, you, and you can also choose what you want adapt sound for. And so it says your ears are unique. You may be more sensitive or less sensitive to certain frequencies of sound compared to other people. Your hearing varies with age and may differ from your left ear to your right ear. Adapt Sound gives you perfect sound that, that's tuned just for your ears. It works whenever you're wearing headphones. Okay, so you can hit Adapt Sound 4. Media and calls, only media or only calls. Well, I have it set for media and calls because I just want to get the best sound quality of everything that I'm listening to. Okay, so then it says choose a preset that matches your age or try a hearing test to get fully personalized sound so right now I've got it off but you've got under 30 years old sick or 30 to 60 years old or over 60 years old and so these are just the different presets and you'll notice each one, while you're listening to music each one of these that you tap on it's gonna tweak the sound a little bit it may or may not be where you want your sound to be but if it isn't then you can hit test my hearing and what it's gonna do is it's gonna send you through a hearing test. And then depending on how you do on that hearing test, the phone is going to customize a specific sound based on how you answered the questions during the hearing test. That is so filthy to me, that is so dope. You know what I mean? Me being an audiophile and everything, I mean, that is so dope. And so that's one of the main features that I love. I mean, music is my absolute life. I don't know where I'd be without music. I've got so much music. You guys, I mean, I pay for I pay for Spotify. I pay for Apple Music. I pay for YouTube Music. I pay for Pandora. You know what I'm saying? It's like I pay for these subscriptions. Some of you guys may be like, dude, Pristine, you are nuts. But it's just I gotta I gotta make sure that I've got access to everything. And even though you know, a lot of these subscriptions services, they, 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 they claim to have everything. They don't always have everything. There's been lots of things that I haven't been able to find on Spotify that I can find on Apple Music or vice versa. Or if it wasn't on both Spotify or Apple Music, I can find it on YouTube Music. You know what I'm saying? So if you're wondering why I pay for all these different subscriptions, it's just to ensure that I've got access to whatever I want to listen to. And the little 10 bucks a month that I'm paying to me is worth it. You know what I mean? And when I'm listening to that content, I wanna to listen to it in the best audio quality possible. And these options, whether it be on the A52, on the S21, or the Z Fold 2, you got, I'm just, I'm Samsunged out right now, y'all. You know what I'm saying? You know, I just recently bought that S, that, 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 that Tab S7 Plus, oh my God. You know, I was going to get the new iPad and review it, and I still might, but I'm like, man, that Tab S7 Plus is so filthy. I'm like, man, I ain't even worried about that iPad right now, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Shout out to the Samsung Knights, man. Shout out to those of y'all that's just Samsunged out right now, you know? But, uh, yeah, man, those are some of my most favorite features. 
and then of course you know just all the things you know that 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 um that uh one ui gives you you know the always on display i mean you know just just the little things the dual stereo speakers that just simply sound amazing right you know there's a lot of things that you're going to find on the at the flagship level here at the mid-range level for a fraction of the cost ladies and gentlemen and I mean, if you don't, you know, if, if, if the, if the, if the, uh, the, the A52 5G is too much for you, you got the A42 5G, you got the A32, you know, and then, you know, you get real like basic with it. You know, you got the A12, the A02, you know, you got some real budget friendly Samsung devices out there, you know, that are going to, you know, give you, you know, some serious bang for your buck, you know, um, so, you know, I got to say that for, you know, for a mid-range offering, it's this, what I'm seeing here, it's not a surprise to me. This is not my first go round with the A series. I know that last year, you know, I had the A, uh, the A51 and the A71, and those were magnificent devices. And it's like, you know, once I got that A71, I wasn't even tripping over my S20s because it's like, you know, pretty much everything that I loved about the S series came in the A series and the A series is giving you all that at a cheaper price. You know, I don't care about the fact that it doesn't have wireless charging. I don't care about the fact that it doesn't have reverse power share and all that type of stuff. Nah, man. I mean, the, the key essentials that I, that I prefer to have, you know, which is a beautiful display, nice sounding stereo speakers, solid cameras, because I'm more of a point and shoot kind of guy. You know, I take tons of photos battery life that's going to give me that staying power that i'm going to need to make it through the day 5g connectivity if that's what i want if i want to be on the latest networks to make sure that i'm getting the 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 the, uh, the best network speeds man you know you don't have to go spend an arm and a leg for that anymore okay so for those of you that are in the market for a good uh uh uh, uh inexpensive 5g device and I, again i know that this phone is 500 bucks some of you guys may be like man pristine that's still too steep well you got to understand this is that upper echelon mid-range this is right underneath flagship territory because ladies and gentlemen there's really only a few things about this about the s21 here that it has over the a52 now again samsung they have they they have to distinguish you know they gotta, they gotta make, there's gotta be a clear difference because they gotta be able to distinguish between flagship and mid-range, you know? And Samsung, you, you see, they're very strategic with how they release these devices. I feel like if they release the A-series at the same time that they release the S-series, the S-series wouldn't sell as much. They lose money because the A-series is so good and it's cheaper it's like, why would people pay those S series prices when pretty much everything that they need is in the A series? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, so, you know, you also got to pay attention to stuff like that too, ladies and gentlemen, when these phone, when these manufacturers, these OEMs, when they got several different versions of phones, they got a S series lineup, they got an A series lineup, man. I mean, obviously, you know, it's to target different markets at different uh, price ranges, but I mean, to avoid overspending it helps it just pays to do the research it pays to even just be patient a little bit and not always be so quick to jump on you know the latest and the greatest right when it comes out because there's always going to be something that's going to come out that's going to be just as good or right there that's going to undercut it in price and it still is going to give you that value it's going to give you everything that you want and need and who doesn't want to pay less for what they want right a52 ladies and gentlemen if you like this video, hit that thumbs up button. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe to expose yourself to tons of videos that I've done like this one. Be sure to hit that notifications bell because every time my videos go live, when you hit that notification bell, every time my video drops a new video, it's gonna send you, yes, you, 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 and you, yeah, yeah, you. It's gonna send you a notification saying, hey, new video, bruh, a new video, miss, pristine. Check that out. Okay, and then what I'm gonna need you to do is check that out and then get down in the comment section, which is where I'm gonna be posted up at all the time, all day, every day. And I'm gonna eagerly anticipate your questions, your comments, your feedback about what you saw. 
and I'd love to talk tech with you. My only requirement, the only thing that I ask is that we keep it respectful. I understand that talking tech oftentimes can be like talking politics. You would think that these debates be, you know, you know, uh, 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 Democratic and Republican. You know what I'm saying? And so I'm just saying, respect my views. I respect your views. And let's gracefully and peacefully, respectfully talk tech. If you guys are curious to know where I got this wallpaper, shout out to my man, Mike Myers, my alter ego. Um, you know, um, what I do is I Google, just Google, just hit Google and type in Michael Myers pictures and then click images. And it's going to bring up a bunch of images. And then what you can do is you can long press on whatever image you like and the phone is going to give you the option to download that image. Okay, you click download. It only takes a second. You download that image. Once the image is downloaded, it's saved into your gallery. Once it's saved into your gallery, then you can choose that image and set it as your wallpaper for your home screen, your lock screen, and then just be up like that. That's how I get Michael Myers on my wallpaper like that, ladies and gentlemen, because I've had a lot of people like, yo, where you get that wallpaper? That wallpaper is dope, and I appreciate that. But that's how I get it. So Google Michael Myers pictures, click on images, and it's going to be a whole plethora of Michael Myers pictures that are going to pop up. Long press on the one you like, hit download image. It's going to download to your phone, which when it does, it's saved into your into your uh, your gallery. And then from your gallery, you can make it your wallpaper. Okay, it's not complicated. I. So man, thank you ladies and gentlemen for allowing me to bend your ear on the Samsung Galaxy A52. This is an excellent mid-range offering. I can definitely highly recommend this device to any of you that are out there looking for a good quality smartphone that is gonna give you a lot of bang for your buck. It's gonna give you 5G connectivity. It's gonna give you really good cameras. It's gonna give you a beautiful display. It's gonna give you battery sustainability that you're gonna, we, uh, gonna, gonna need. It's gonna give you awesome dual stereo speakers. I mean, this, this device is fully loaded. You're getting one UI, Android 11, a whole plethora of features and functions, probably more so than you could ever use, all for $4.99. And again, you can buy this unlocked. This is the T-Mobile variant. And so, you know, I'm pretty sure, you know, there's promotions and things where you can get this phone possibly a little cheaper than that $4.99 price tag. All right. Just do your research, but the link will be down below in the description if you want to cop it from tmobile.com, which is where I got mine. And uh, timestamps are also in the description. Camera review rolling right now, ladies and gentlemen. So, man, you already know, please stay safe, get spiritually fit, and keep it pristine in every aspect of your lives. I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace. Camera review rolling right now. What's going on, y'all? All right, so check it out. So this is the quad camera system on the Samsung Galaxy A52 5G. Now, again, we've got a 64 megapixel, 20, uh, 26 millimeter wide lens. We've got a 12 megapixel, uh, 123 degree field of view ultra wide lens. We've got a five megapixel macro lens and a five megapixel depth sensor. Um, again, the features, we do have an LED flash, panorama, HDR, 4K recording at 30 frames per second, and 1080p recording at 30 or 60 frames per second. And we do have gyro electronic image stabilization. And so um, you can see real quick, I mean, looking out the window, I mean, it's another, this, this looks like winter. <laughs> we're, we're well into the spring, but this looks like winter in Seattle. So... Um, and it's pouring down, raining. Uh, this phone does have an IP rating of IP67. So I don't know, maybe we'll take it outside. And, you know, it's not really a big deal, you know, if it gets wet or whatever. Um, but uh, yeah, so, you know, we'll just go ahead and, you know, go for a little whiz around the house, you know, um, just to kind of see what that, uh, with that gyro electronic image stabilization is looking like. You know, here's my bedroom right here. You know what I'm saying? And uh, Xbox Series S right there. You know what I'm saying? I've been on that Resident Evil 8 tough. And uh, man, you know, let's just take a stroll downstairs real quick. You 
And so it is nice that we've got, you know, 4K recording on this bad boy. Um, you know, it's getting to a point, ladies and gentlemen, to where if you really want 5G technology, we're not having to spend uh, $1,000 plus for it. So, um, yeah, let me go ahead and uh, let's see here. But in the viewfinder, things are looking really nice. So here we are outside, you know, thank goodness for we, you know, we got the gazebo action back here. But um, now this looks absolutely gorgeous. You know, just the overall color reproduction, you know, you could see the rain. It's kind of like misty and foggy out here, you know, which is interesting because earlier today it was clear and it's only 534 uh, p.m. I mean, Pacific time. So, you know, um, it's crazy just to see this misty fog just kind of come over like that. But I mean, you can see, you know, the kids, they got some toys out here, you know, neatly organized. But the color reproduction of this camera, you know, colors really seem to be on point. You know, I know that some people feel as though there's like a major drop off in camera uh, uh, um, quality, you know, with the A series, given the fact that it's Samsung's mid range. Um, but not so much. You know, now you're not, you can't expect to get everything that you're going to get on the flagship variations like you would see on the S line and the notes. But I mean, ladies and gentlemen, I mean, make no mistake, man. These are some really, really good capable cameras on the A52. And for the average consumer, I think that these cameras are going to be more than suitable for the average consumer's needs as far as videography and still shot photography. You know, we got the uh, we got the depth sensor, you know, so you can take some really nice uh, portrait shots. Um, and there's a few more things that you can do on this camera system as well. Certain things that you will find on the S line and the Note line are here on the A series, especially here, the 52 here, because the 52 is like, you know, the top dog out of the A series. So, um, yeah, sound off in the comments on what you guys think about the Samsung Galaxy A52. This is the rear quad camera system. I'm going to flip it around. We've got a 32 megapixel selfie sensor that I'm going to take some footage of really quickly and we'll close out the camera review. All right. All right. So, so this is the 32 megapixel selfie sensor on the Samsung Galaxy A52. Again, I'm still outside under the gazebo. Now you can see... Just, you know, a little overexposure with the sky in the background. You know, it's really bright, even though it's like really gray and rainy out here. Um, but I mean, you know, everything else really seems to be on point. But I noticed with the sky, I mean, there's a lot of overexposing going on. I can definitely see that in the viewfinder. Okay. It's just, it looks really bright and it's not as bright as it's portraying, as the image is portraying behind me. You see what I'm saying? Um, but uh, aside from that, let's go ahead and head back indoors. Okay. So now I'm back inside. Like, I in the viewfinder, I look crystal clear. You know what I mean? Um... And I understand, you know, a lot of the image quality is going to be based upon lighting. You know what I mean? And so, you know, I got, you know, a fair amount of lighting turned on in the house. It's still daylight outside. And so I try to get natural light in here, you know, save on electricity. But, um, yeah, you know, I mean, you know, things to me, they seem to look good. They seem to look good. Now, like I said, I mean, should you expect the performance that you're going to find on the S series or the Note series? No, because this is the mid range, you know, but like I said, I mean, given the fact that this is what it is, this is a really good camera system for the price. I mean, this package overall is a really, really good package. You know, you're getting a lot of value. You're getting a lot of phone for not a whole lot of money. You know what I mean? So... Ladies and gents, this is the 32 megapixel selfie sensor on the Samsung Galaxy A52. Sound off in the comments on what you think about it down below. If you like this video, you already know. Hit that thumbs up button. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe to expose yourself to tons of more videos that I've done like this one. Be sure to click that notification bell so that when my videos drop and go live, you'll get notified. And be one of the first to get in the comments and let me know what you think about what you saw. And let's talk tech respectfully respectfully all right so you guys already know please stay safe get spiritually fit thank you for letting me bend your ear on the samsung galaxy a52 
Salute to all of you that made it this far in the video. You know what I'm saying? For the full pristine review. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.